I'm proud to be an American, where at least I know I'm free. And I won't forfeit the man who died to gave that right to me. Now I proudly stand up next to you and defend her still today. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Great Taz once again here with another replay from the world of tanks. In this replay, we're going to be watching Mr. Wiegen. He is playing the M48 Patton, the U.S. Tier 10 medium tank, tree tank. There are a couple reward tanks. Now, Mr. Wiegand is taking up a spot to for uh, that is not generally good. Most people go charging right up towards the the, um, the hill edge, but he's going on the outer edge, and this gives him an somewhat of an advantage. He can fire a further up into the uh, the mouth of the mines. Uh, and that is the map we are on. He can fire further up into that mouth. And with being able to fire further up in that mouth, he can get better shots uh, and not worry about getting shot by their, the enemy um, as they're pushing up, trying to get further into the mouth. Now, the enemy had taken the uh, the hill, a uh, couple of projettos, a Batchat 12 ton, and the uh, T44-100 have all made it up on the hill as we can see now if you noticed uh, I didn't mention it but this is a tier 10 battle it's a 357 battle uh, Mr. Wiegan is being the top tier they have an IS-7 um, hit Mr. Wiegan in the baton and an object 268 version 4 versus a super conch a 430U and an E4 now Mr. Wiegan over here is hiding but he saw the centurion and he was falling and he knew kind of knew what the centurion was going to be playing at um right there by simply um aiming to where the centurion was he knew that the centurion was going to go invisible or unspotted and pull back into the bush and as soon as mr wiegan was spotted he knew that i.e he was the Centurion was there, and he had more than the majority of his tank. Ah, the E-75 is also over there. Um, and blocked the shot from the Sent-1. There's another shot. Another block on the Sent-1. <laughs> Excuse me. Pajetto 46 taking some shots at Mr. Wiegan. And he's in a bad predicament because the enemy has the hill. The enemy has the island. So he's kind of in a crossfire. Um per se. Takes another blind shot at where the sent one was in hopes that maybe uh, getting some more damage in the sent one. We don't know. We won't see that until the sent one is um, respotted. Now, the right now it's five. It's zero to five. Mr. Wiegand's team is um, failing at doing any good. Uh, as you can see, there he's going to try to help his T-44 as it looks uh, as the T-44 is getting rushed by a Rev um, M4A1, the Revelis, or better known the French M4. He takes a shot, wasn't was aimed, but took a shot, and you couldn't really well tell where he was aimed. So we'll say that was right on target. Now he's aiming at the low. He sees the low moving around. He's still paying attention to the minimap. He's hoping that there's a spot between him uh, and where the low is, and... Patience paid off. There it is. And patience went off. You notice he got very lucky on that shot. RNG was in his favor. He wasn't even aimed at the low. He was aimed at the building that was hiding the low. And his round um, trajectory was off enough that he actually still hit the low. Anyways, here we go. Moving around, looking up on the hill. We see nothing there. Take another peek. There's the 430 U. Takes a shot and misses. Spotted. Um, still moving around. He, he's moved into a very defensive position because he's he's below half life, which is not a bad thing to do, um, considering he's more effective if he starts sniping when he hit half life than if he is trying to brawl with everybody. Now, Mr. Wiegand is now officially the only tier ten left on his team. They are still down five kills. Um, and it doesn't look good for Mr. Wiegand and his team. Well, we'll have to see how things go. Uh, the enemy still has the hill with three known tanks on the hill. 
uh, two Pajettos and the 4100. Here comes the E4 around the corner and takes out the Tiger II. Mr. Wiegand takes a good shot into the lower glaciers. We can still see the T44s alive with only like 5% life. Another shot trying to hit the E4 in a weak spot, but it bounces on the side armor. Doesn't hit where Mr. Wiegand wants. Another shot hits where Mr. Wiegand wants in generally real location, real, really close location to where he wants. Now he sees the T32. And he must have been poked out just a little too far because the 110 takes a shot at him and takes some more of his hit points away. Now he's down to a two shot to most of the enemy with one shot by the E4. He does not want to get hit. Um, the Vegettos are the only ones that are going to really have to take three shots to get him. Even the 44100 can uh, two shot him. The Centurion one will also be, need a couple more shots. So he's going to take a shot into the cupola of the E4 and gets it. He is spotted by the low. There's the low. He's not even looking at him. He's going to take a shot and unfortunately bounces off the low. The lower returns fire and also misses. So it's a miss-miss situation. We are now loaded with HE, or heat. Going to take a shot at the T32 and hits the T32. That's a good hit. Not exactly sure where the T32 was hit, but we'll say it don't matter anyway. Ah, oh goodness. Here comes the... 100 both the 100 and him missed their shots now he's reloading standard rounds apcr because it'll be easier to take on the t10 t10 gets hit by uh his alley the 263 now it's a five it's a 10-7 battle the his team has taken the hill uh now it's a 7-11 battle um and now it's a 8-11 battle Mr. Wiegand's team is bringing, doing a little bit of pulling back here. There goes Mr. Wiegand getting it even closer way and capturing his second, uh, second fire. Uses the repair kit to repair the gun. We'll see if that's going to affect him later. Um, having a good, uh, good aiming circle is good. Uh, he's peeking around here, finds a T32 again. T32 is currently hiding behind that building and taking shots. He's looking for the E4. The E4 disappeared. He wanted to take a quick spot to know where that E4 was. If he could go around the corner and get this T32. But unknown. T32 makes a fatal mistake. Backs up far enough to get over half his tank back. And view range of Mr. Wiegand. And Mr. Wiegand takes advantage of that. Now Mr. Wiegand is looking at, as uh, using some sort of... Um, he's either using Wargaming minimap mod or another minimap mod. Because he looks right where the Super Conqueror was first. Um, not wanting to take another shot. Again, like I said, about the only tank that's not going to kill him one shot would have been the Sent One who just shot him and ammo racked him. It would take the Sent One probably three shots. There's one of them. And luckily, um, and unfortunately, luckily it was an, uh, wasn't was a complete destruction ammo rack. It was just uh, damage. Uh, and unfortunately for Mr. Wiegand, he used his cooldown to repair his gun. Now he has to wait. To get it, he, uh, looks like Mr. Wigan is going to try that shot one more time underneath the dead tank. Does not succeed. Is that two times at a hail mary and it's a fail? His repair kit is up and he is going to use it again to fix his um, ammo rack. Takes another shot at the sent one. This time bouncing off the sent one's turret armor, which kind of makes you mad sometimes when you're a tier ten with almost 300 millimeters or of pen and you can't go through the uh, armor. Ah, takes that Hail Mary shot once again and and lands it. Only for 75 of damage. The 263 says the 704 is on the island, so we will keep uh, attention to that. Uh, his last known location was on their TD Ridge Hill. Here comes the E75 up, trying to press the 263. Mr. Wigan takes a shot. If you notice, he fired before he, he backed out before he fired. So really he wasn't aiming at anything and he got lucky to get that track shot in my opinion. But he goes back for the second track shot and the the, uh, the death and in turn uh, the E75 is now no more. Mr. Wiegand's team has turned this around from a 0-5 to to a 12-11 match. Mr. Wiegand's still unsure where that E4 went. He's hoping to peek back and forth maybe to see it, see it on a corner. Um, but we're not sure. We do know where the Super Conqueror was, and we have a suspicion where the 704 last was. But we don't want to stick our head out. The uh, Any three of those enemy tanks could one-shot uh, Mr. Wiegand at this point in time. So Mr. Wiegand is being cautious. Um, 
and he has been since he lost went his hit points down well below 50 percent which i don't blame him i would have did the same super conquer is spotted we're going to say the 263 spotted him because i don't think the 53 was close enough to the edge there mr wiegand is setting a trap he knows that super conquer is not going to be smart enough he's going to push forward which he did and he takes the freaking free shot in the side and the 53 tp comes along and kills Ms. the super con Mr. Wigan is going to take the, the E4 is respotted. and Mr. Wigan is going to come out take the shot now was it fully aimed at the cupola again RNG in favor of Mr. Wigan here um, and with doing that he takes out the E4 his round veers to the right and end up hitting the commander's hatch or the cupola and finally taking out the E4 now all that's left is a 704 and the 263 said his last was pretty sure his location was over there because I'm going to assume he was fired at from that location. The 704 is over there. The 2063 goes or spots him. Mr. Wigan is staying back. He doesn't want to get shot by the 704. And we can see the Pajetto and the 53 went to the north because they thought that's where the 704's last location was. So they weren't paying attention to the chap. They went to the last known location that they would have got from uh, either um, the Wargaming minimap stuff or uh, in game. A, a map mod like XVM fires again. Mr. Wiggins not having the best luck when it comes to hitting this 704, as we can see. Um, looks like the Pajetto is going around the north side. The 53 is going straight at it from the the east, and Mr. Wiggins is going down through the south. Now, again, he doesn't want to get spotted, doesn't want to get shot, so he's going to aim. Ah, the 704 noticed that Mr. Wiggins knocked the tree down. Mr. Wiggins does take time uses his patience and gets the shot in on the 704 side while the pajetto takes his attention the 704's attention away from mr wiegand now unfortunately the the pajetto cannot take a shot from the 704 but if he does it's not an overly huge deal yes it's going to be less um xp for the pajetto but it's not a huge deal because it's going to give mr wiegand in the 53 a chance to actually move on the 704 now he's not he's going to take a quick takes a quick snapshot uh, a blind shot to where the 704 might have been now if the 704 was there he would have been dead but the 704 stayed where he was last spotted which was a harder move especially considering he's kind of surrounded he has a Vegetto in front of him uh 53 beside on his right and then mr uh, wiegand to his back and in turn he's now looks like he's not quite sure what the 704 is doing. It looks like he's trying to push on the Pajetto. Mr. Wiegand is going to put that attempt on in an end and turn getting his seventh kill of the game and bringing it back from a 0-5 to a 15-12. That, ladies and gentlemen, was a good game. Uh, hats off to the three surviving uh, team members on Mr. Wiegand's team. Uh, Guitar 66. Fakju, yeah, isn't that funny? Fakju, 16, and Mr. Wiegand, all holding their own as best they could to make sure that the team won. And we got to give um, some uh, handouts to Mutsin, uh 92 the Object 263. He also helped in bringing the enemy down from top tier. Now, he did stay in the back pretty much the majority of the match, but it's a TD. And TDs usually tend to do that. Um, the only one that don't is kind of the 6, 8, and the E3. And uh, at Tier 10, because they could really take a punishment from front end and not have a lot of worries. Now let's go ahead and move on over to uh, our Watt replays. Uh, actually, we're going to Watt Records today. And uh, see what we have here for stats. All right. Well, Mr. Wiegand walked out with his a an ace badge um, in his M48 A5 Patton. Good job, Mr. Wiegand. With that, you also earned yourself a fire for effect, a duelist, a hand of God, and a bruiser. Some accolades. Well, on top of that, Mr. Wiegand also got Top Gun, missed the Radley Walters by one kill, and high caliber. Uh, high caliber damage was 6,639. Again, it was a tier 8 and a tier 10 battle. So it, it's kind of a somewhat of a normal situation story. And you can see Mr. Wiegand's ace came 
with a 1281 base experience. Good job, Mr. Wiegand. And as you can see here, the Progetto, probably the Progetto 46, probably also, considering he's the top on XP, I would also have to say that he got Ace Tanker. And for the 53 TP, since there's not a whole lot of them floating around right now, it is the Tier 8, um, tier eight Polish tank. I would say he probably at least got first class if he did not get an Ace Tanker. Good job, gentlemen. Again, Mr. Wiegand, of course, had top damage, followed by the Vegetto, our 263 buddy, who actually ended up dying in the end, and then our 53 TP. So our four heroes in the end... Um, had the top damage. Uh, the E4 on their team, Nod4, did really well, as you can see here. He didn't have, he wasn't top in experience, but he was top in damage, so he was dealing a whole lot of damage to people. So good job over there, Nod4, for attempting to uh, win this. Um, it came down to a lucky shot for Mr. Wigan that took you out. It happens. And all that stuff. Mr. Wigan did use a lot of um, gold ammo. Uh, he did start off with 90k. He ended up spending 12k um, in credits. He did have to repair his tank. He did have a lot of um, a ammo resupply. And he had um, some consumables he had to also resupply. So in total, he lost 12k. Um, Mr. Wiegand, my best bet to you would be um, win... Consumables are on sale. Take a minute or two and go ahead and buy some consumables. It might help you in the long run. And he also earned five rewards. So this was a premium account. It was a good thing because instead he would have lost 42,000 um, experience, another 30,000. So uh, again, it's that 50% bonus. He, uh, so in turn, it could have been worse. Could have fired nothing but premium, but Mr. Wiegand did use the APCR of the patent to um, do a lot of work and then heat when he needed it, and, and it was a good play, Mr. Wiegand. Um, uh, let's move on to the end, uh, as we generally say. Um, with that being said, uh, this I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I found this replay uh, on World of Rec uh, Watch Records. Um, dot com what dash records dot com and I picked it because um, one I have a f kind of favoritism to my American tanks I am on the North American surfer I am an American and I also am a soldier um, in the US military um, so I kind of have a little more favoritism to this but that wasn't the reason um, the real reason uh, just it looked like a good replay, and uh, I picked it up. If you enjoyed this please replay, please give it a thumbs up. If you did not and thinks it, think it really deserves one, go ahead and give it a thumbs down. Um, if you have any comments, please go ahead and comment. I will respond in uh, a quick fashion. And if you're not subscribed, please click the subscription because I'm trying to upload three to four videos uh, a week and uh, do monthly game reviews. And uh, starting today, which is Sunday... I am going to feature one replay that isn't of my own. Uh, that is what I've been doing for a long time is just all my own, my own replays. But uh, this is going to help me get some variety. So every Sunday is going to be um, a best of the week. Um, and this, in my opinion, best of the week um, replay. So with that being said, again, this is Great Tez signing off. And we will see you in the world of tanks.